We are rolling once again back to full reviews of running shoes and first impression videos. Feeling good. Oh, not traveling and being in airports is just so nice so that I can give you my thoughts on all these shoes. So here we go. New Balance 1080 V10s. First impression run today. Not my full review. That'll happen after 50 miles. Today's run, 10 miles, 16 kilometers, about 655 per mile, 415 per kilometer. Nice little clip, you know, moving along pretty nicely. Felt good out there. And uh, this is a neutral road shoe from New Balance, neutral for sure. Uh, we're looking at an eight millimeter drop from heel to toe. So that's pretty, you know, pretty high for a daily trainer. I like it. I'm not afraid of a higher drop actually. For the stack height, I could not figure out a, a reliable source for stack height. I was researching, researching, I didn't find anything. But my guess is 32 in the heel, 24 in the forefoot, just based off of looking at other shoes as well. For the weight, we're looking at 9.9 .9 ounces for men's size nine, or 8.4 ounces for women's size eight. And there on your screen is my size, uh, the weight for my size. So in ounces there and also in grams, there you go. Uh, for the upper, we're looking at an engineered knit upper. All right, so it's that knit material. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try my best not to turn this into a comparison video, but I can't resist to just bring up the fact that this is the Beacon V2, which a lot of people love the Beacon lineup, including myself. However, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I think things are gonna change in 2020. The Beacon V2 toe box upper material just is sloppy engineering or sloppy construction compared to the 1080. This, it's just like scrunching up a lot. I just don't like what they did. I, I prefer the Beacon V1 upper over the V2, meaning version two. Um, so good work, 1080. Uh, crew, whoever designed this upper, it's spot on. It's laying on top of the foot perfectly. All right, moving on to the tongue. The tongue is gusseted, meaning it is connected to the insole, just under the insole of the shoe, so the tongue shouldn't slide around on the top of your foot. For the heel counter, so here in the back of the upper, amazing. So major issues, okay. I shouldn't say made, but issues in the 1080 V9 where the heel was slipping out of the shoe, not slipping out completely, but slipping around. And now, today on my first run, it felt perfect. Just like the heel sits down in this little, uh, just this little cup inside the heel, it's just perfect. So good work. I love what they're doing in the heel counter for these new, uh, new New Balance shoes. You can see it there on the Beacon as well. Just that flare in the back, and it just feels so good. I, I, can, I can tell there's gonna be no issues with the Achilles tendon, like getting a blister or something happening in the back here. Oh, it's amazing. So, and also, I don't know, it's just like, it's just a nice, it's just a really nice material in the back here. Um, in what would be called the collar of the shoe, okay? This is the collar of the shoe. So. Wow, I'm really liking the upper of the 1080. For the midsole, we're looking at Fresh Foam X midsole foam all the way through from, from toe to heel. And um, it's a lighter material compared to the V9. Uh, supposed to give you a little more energy return. I didn't, I didn't feel it today per se, but again, this is just my first run. And on the outsole, lots of rubber happening on the outsole. Um, I'm just gonna say maybe a little too much. It felt, um, it just felt a little firm on the landing. I don't know what, I think what's gonna have to happen is that I'm gonna need, and I'm just gonna talk about comfort right now, I think this shoe is gonna need 25 miles to break in a little bit. I usually don't say that about shoes, but it just felt firmer landing than I was hoping for. I was hoping for a little softer landing. So we shall see if once I put it through some more paces, if it does begin to open up a little bit um, through the uh, midsole and the outsole. As far as the fit goes, we are spot on with going true to size. Uh, I would even say perhaps if you have a wider foot, I think this will work for you. Um, yeah, I don't see too many issues with, you know, it's just not, it's just not that narrow of a shoe uh, on the bed. Let me just see a little bit more on the bed. Yeah, maybe a little, 
maybe a little snug through the midfoot, but overall I think you're gonna be okay. All right, let's pull out. Usually I don't do this on the first impressions, but pulling out the insole, I'm trying to remember to do that. Some insoles, and I'm just gonna call out, should I call it? I'll call it now. Hoka, I just wish Hoka would put in some better insoles into their shoe. I don't know what they're doing quite. This is, I can just sense, awesome. Um, just a nice little a layer of cushion, uh, not too much, and good work. I can just sense that it, it, they put some thought uh, into this insole. I appreciate a good insole. So overall fit is spot on, and uh, I will say though, as far as back to comfort, upper is good. I might have to, listen, when I'm running high volume, usually like over 80 miles a week, uh, my legs start to get tired. So there's this Spenco is what it's called. It's available down below from Amazon. It's just this little layer of cushion that I was taught about when I ran at the University of Colorado. And you just slide it into your shoe under the insole, just slide it in just to take the edge off of the pounding, especially if you're doing a lot of running on concrete and pavement. I love it, and frankly, after experiencing the rubber on this outsole, my legs were like, eh, man, you might want, I might need a little more cushion. So I might be adding Spenco to the ride of the 1080 V10. So far, my positive and my drawback, positive, definitely the heel counter and the call, like, it's perfect. I just love what they did here. The drawback, again, is just a little firm landing. The price right now, 150, is it worth it? I don't know yet. Feels maybe a little high, but we'll see. I'll keep you posted, $150 brand new out of the box. So how will I use this shoe moving forward? I don't know. I don't think it's an easy day shoe for me. I don't think it's a long run shoe for me. I don't know. Maybe it's just like that, I don't know, eight to 12 mile range, just getting in the miles. I, I'm not sure. I'm, I gotta figure out how I will use this shoe moving forward question of the day first impression new balance 1080 v10 but question of the day all the new balance fans out there what are you running in and are you enjoying it all right what what new balance shoe are you running in or um has anybody run in any new balance shoe in the, in 2019 like is maybe you're not running in new balance right now but maybe there's another shoe um earlier in 2019 that you've been running in let us know uh, so anyway, there you go. Those are just my first impressions. I hope you enjoyed and we will get this shoe to 50 miles. I'm sure pretty quickly as my volume increases getting ready for the Houston Marathon. Sound good everyone? All right, there you go. Tossing it back on the right to the New Balance Beacon V2 full review. And we'll toss it back to a 2018 vlog uh, where I reviewed the New Balance Beacon V1 there on the left. Love you all. As always, thanks for being here. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.